Hello, you're watching Calling All Stations, and I've got something slightly different for you guys uh, today. I've got a review video. I feel like I'm doing a lot of uh, new things on the channel lately, um, but I've got a review video for you, and it is of the Backman S-Stock. I don't usually do YouTube reviews. Um, I usually do them on my website at www.callingallstations.co.uk. I usually do written posts. However, they take very long to uh, edit, and they take me a good few days to write. Writing posts I don't think has ever been something that's come naturally to me so I've always had to work quite hard at the website and I think I'm going to have to talk about the website in another another video because a lot of people will notice that it's been very quiet lately and that is partly deliberate and partly so I can spend some time on, on YouTube and, and trying new mediums. I'll probably talk about that on, on, on another video. So whether I'm going to do more reviews uh, on the YouTube channel, maybe. I know it's a market that's already really been cornered by a lot of people. We're talking IC82, obviously, and there are other YouTubers out there who like to um, emulate that that style as well. And I'm not, I, I don't really want to encroach on that market too much. I think it's something that's been done before. So whether I'm going to do more YouTube reviews, perhaps of special things, and and the Backman S stock, I think, is 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 certainly warrants a special review. And I did talk about that. I wanted to do that. Uh, a couple of videos ago and again I said there are some unanswered questions about this model that I think you guys will find really useful so let's take a look okay guys let's take a look at the box and it's going to be a very brief look I'm not going to do a full unboxing video uh, you guys know what to expect from from Backman packaging and it is identical in size to every other Backman set it's the sort of ice brick um, package um, but there are a few unique features of this set that are specific to this model. Um, so let's take a look at them now. So instantly you'll be drawn to the font on the top left corner which displays the title London Underground S-Stock Motorised Ford Car Train Pack. Now that is the correct uh, London Underground TFL Johnston font that is used on the signs and inside the trains and on the maps. Well, I should say that it's at least the correct font as of 2015. Don't forget TFL have actually modernised this font slightly this year in 2016. Uh, they've changed some of the features like on the underneath of the G and um, some of the crossed um, letters like the T. Um, but for all intensive purposes, most people won't notice any difference in the font and that will be the instantly recognisable London Underground font for most people. And it's picked out on the rest of the box. So if we go around to here, the Backman address is in the same font and it's even exactly the same on the product description and the product code. And that's just a really nice touch when they do things like that. It shows that they've been working with um, the London Transport Museum to produce a, a product that's specific to them, um, which may explain the price later on and we'll, we'll get to that a bit later but it's it's really nice when they do add these extra features it does show that they've been working hard on, on making this product the best that they can you'll see this tagline produced by Backman exclusively for London Transport Museum I kind of feel that that should be for the London Transport Museum but maybe I'm just being picky and you'll get the museum address down there now that is true that is the only place you can buy this model and they are usually well stocked in Covent Garden if you want to do rock up and buy one in person as I did do however if you're living a little further afield you can pick up these models by ordering them on the museum website now, most people will know, uh, or if you don't know, this is what a uh, Backman set usually looks like. It's a dark blue box with some red trim, and they all look like that, pretty much. Um, you'll see that this box is slightly different. It's a dark red, uh, dark grey colour, I should say, and it's got this little bit of trim on the side, this sort of striped line, which is obviously supposed to represent the lines that the S-Stop trains run on. You've got yellow for circle, you've got green for district, You've got pink for Hammersmith and City, and then you've got this kind of funny fuchsia colour, I, I guess you could call it. And what I'm seeing on the camera viewfinder is exactly what I'm seeing in real life. It's not the true colour that obviously this is supposed to represent, and this colour's 
supposed to represent by order of elimination the metropolitan line now in real life the metropolitan line is a lot darker than that and it's a lot sort of more brown it's kind of a maroon color or a dark red color if you will and this color is not quite the same um, so they've obviously not used the correct um, colors for the line and there are there is a style guide that TFL have and they do have the exact sort of um, CYM or whatever you call it the Pantone colors for each line and I'm a bit confused why they've not used the exact colors because they've obviously gone to the effort of licensing the correct font they've licensed the roundel they've got everything else right and obviously they've licensed the image of the model however they've not got the right colors of the line maybe a little afterthought it's not really a massive thing but it would have been nice to to have seen the correct colors you'd also have this sort of orange stripe but i'm pretty sure that is just for decoration it's uh, don't read too much into it there's nothing about the london overground in that to be <laughs> to be extracted from the backman box Finally, let's take a look at the back side of the box and you've got this really nice piece of artwork depicting Baker Street Station, which is one of the stations, uh, quite, a, quite an iconic station that the S-Dock trains will run through in real life. Baker Street was one of the first London Underground stations ever built and it is quite an iconic station when you do go and visit it, it, it is quite recognisable. There's the typical Backman uh, description of the model, um, telling you all about the S-Dock trains, where they're going to run. Let's talk about the Metropolitan, the Circle, the h &C, and the District Lines. I will hold the camera there if you want to briefly read that, but I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, moving on, and finally, you have this kind of diagram of an eight-car S-Dock train. Now, re real life, these trains run in eight car formations or seven car formations. So what you get in the set is, is four cars, you get two motorized cars at each end obviously, and then you get two intermediate trailer cars. If you were then so inclined, you can buy the additional um, cars from the London Transport Museum to make this model either an S7 or an S8. I will get it on to how much they cost um, in a little bit. Uh, but that's the box, so let's take a look very briefly at some other additional things that you get inside. You get this rather nice little leaflet about the S-Dock train. Uh, now normally in Backman models and in Hornby models you get a really cheap piece of A4 paper um, telling you where to put the DCC chip, where to put oil if you need to lubricate the model, and where to uh, find separate parts and how to take the model apart. This is a slightly little bit more in depth, which is quite nice, and it's printed on some sort of nice glossy paper, and it has got some colour finishing, although it would have been nice to have that piece of artwork uh, reprinted in colour perhaps. Anyway, not really complaining about that, it's just a nice little addition. But the information you do get in this little pamphlet is very useful and it tells you how to couple and uncouple the units. Uh, there's a specifically different coupling system that is unique to this model and I'll get onto that a little bit later, uh, but it tells you how to do that. It naturally tells you how to fit a DCC chip and there's a really nice diagram of where the screws are and it's a really detailed diagram. You don't always get that in, in Backman or Hornby models, they just sort of give you an arrow to roughly where the screws are. That is a really nicely detailed model representation rather. Um, it talks about running in, it talks about the radius curves you can use it on, you can only use this on second radius curves or higher and although, although most models coming out by Backman do say that these days. Um, that is exactly true. You can't run this on first radius curves. If you do, you are putting the coupling uh, mechanism at risk. You might damage it. And uh, uh, more importantly, the train will derail if you try and, and push that sort of second radius limit. Uh, it tells you the usual things about DCC decoded fitting. And then it gives you a rather nice diagram of how the train should be put together and which cars to put in which place. Now, Treat this with a pinch of salt because obviously this train in real life doesn't run as a four car formation. They either run as a seven or an eight car formation. So even though they've given you a description of in what order to put the units, then maybe in real life you're, ne you're never going to see them in that order anyway. But it is quite a nice addition of saying which way the fans should be pointing, um, which unit numbers to put in what order. It is quite a nice touch. 
But that does feed on, you will notice down here to the diagram of the train again, and it sort of points you, this unit is gonna be, obviously that's the motor car at one end, you've got the motor car at the other end, and then this unit is gonna become that one, and then if you buy the additional um, cars from the London Transport Museum shop, then you're gonna have the units in the right order, and that's what that's all about. It's just a nice nice little addition that they've included. And obviously on the back you've got the usual parts list which comes in in any backman set. A couple of additional things that you do get in the box is this rather strange looking piece of black plastic that looks like it's just broken off something. It hasn't, that is for um, coupling and uncoupling the units, and we'll get on to that later. And you also get these additional wheels and you'll see that these have traction tires on and they do recommend that you may be required to add these wheels on if you're running the full eight car train if you need a little bit of extra traction they do give you these uh, wheels with traction tires i do know how modelers feel about um locos with traction tires but you'll notice they're very small very fine wheels and if when we take a look at the model itself the wheels are very fine scale so you do need the uh, traction tyres if you're going to run the eight-car train for that extra bit of traction. OK, let's take a look at the model itself then, and we'll start with the motor car, and we'll start right at the front of the train. Now, the unit number is number 2188, and the train number is 455, if you can see that at the top of the display there. The destination of the train is Allgate, and that's obviously on the Metropolitan Line. Now that head code or destination display, um, that lights up along with the uh, tail lights and the headlights as expected and there's also a cab light inside as well. These wiper blades are separate fitted pieces of plastic which is nice, all three of them there. However the handrails and everything else on the front of the model is part of the moulded plastic. Now the livery is really nice there, it's the proper true red front end of a London Underground model and it's the same red obviously as you get on the doors um, and it is really nicely uh, applied there. Now these metal pieces down below and these are actually metal on this unit um, again they're, they're all part of the same pieces, piece of moulded metal apart from this coupler unit here which you can actually remove and there's a screw on the underside of the model hopefully you can see it just there enabling you to remove that front coupler now why Backman have included that I'm not quite sure the only reason I can think that you'd ever want to take that off is if you were going to run this train in its delivery formation that is with a class 20 or a pair of class 20s at the front and a barrier wagon in between which some people may want to do and if Backman that's the reason why you've added in that screw to remove that front coupling that is an incredible piece of insight and I'm really impressed that you've included it if you haven't and it's just by chance and there's some other reason well done you got lucky so let's take a look at the side of the model and it's more good news there in terms of detail let's take a look at these doors where you've got a really nicely applied um, set of warning labels and that text I'm afraid it really is that fine that you can't read it but it's nice that it's there and those those stickers in real life tell you mind the doors don't be stupid don't get things stuck in them You've also got these two little grey dots there for the door release buttons. Um, now both of those are printed uh, transfers. It would probably be really um, unrealistic to expect Mac Backman to add additional parts, but it's nice that those details have been picked out anyway. Moving down, you've got the obviously you've got the uh, London Underground roundel, and if you notice there. Now I just looked at this actually and I just discovered this and I had to look it up actually. You'll notice the front set of doors here, which are at the front of the motor car, and you'll notice the second and third sets of doors there, they're different sizes. And you can see that in the, uh, the width of the windows there. And I actually had to go and look this up on the proper S stock trains and I had to go and look some pictures up. But this is actually true, these sets of doors right at the front, they're actually smaller than the other sets of doors, they've actually got custom fit doors for the front of the train why i'm not sure perhaps it's something to do with the door width and fitting in um, extra seating space in this little compartment here 
but I've never noticed that of the rear wear stock trains. But it's really nice, obviously, that Backman have chose to pick that out. And actually, that's that's something that's true to life. In terms of the end of the model, you've got the destination display. Now, this says Metropolitan Line, but in real life, this um, changes between saying Metropolitan Line and where the train's going, which in this case is Allgate. On the bottom of the model, you do have some nice touches. You do have <coughs> a warning label down um, down here. It's sort of a, it's an electric flash. So it's obviously warning people to stay away from the, uh, the pickup equipment and the uh, pickup shoes. And there's a little warning sticker here that says um, car stands only. Whatever that means, I'm not sure. Somebody who works on these trains will be able to tell me. Again, there's another warning label there, but it's so fine I can't see that. Um, you do have a nice little, nice touches of yellow. However, it is all one piece of black metal on this model. The intermediate cars are actually plastic. I'll get onto that slightly in a moment, um, but the metal does give the train a nice bit of weight, and you'll notice you can see through the entire unit there is no motor intruding on the inside of that train, which is really nice. Um, talking of the motors, they had to specifically design these motors, and the motor's actually there. They had to specifically design these for this unit, and it's a special type of slimline motor specifically designed for this unit. So that's obviously going to escalate cost. Again, I will talk about that later. Um, but that's why you're not seeing any bulky mo motor housing in the middle of the train, which is really good. We like to see that. Talking on the underside, there is actually a fair amount of detail. It just looks a little bit, if I'm just going to be picky, just looks a little bit cheap in this sort of black, slightly shiny, slightly glossy um, finish. I'm not complaining too much because it is a very well detailed model, um, but if I was going to be extra picky, maybe a little bit of additional colour um, and maybe not quite so much black. But if you do look at the real things, I mean, most of it is black anyway. You do have the correct pickup shoes there, just hopefully you can see that. You've got one there and you've got one on the rear of the units um, as well. We've got another pickup shoe there. Again, in real life, these, there's all little bits of colour and there's bits of equipment that are picked out in various different colours. Perhaps it would have been nice to see some of that, but again, that's going to raise the cost and the cost of it is already quite high. Again, I will talk about that later. On the underside, there is some nice detail which you're probably never going to see, however it's there. And this sort of box here, which looks like it's separate, it does, that's where the DCC chip goes. Uh, in terms of the DCC chip, whilst I'm talking about that, you do need two separate chips. Um, one for the front motor car and one for the rear motor car. This uh, set actually has two individually powered units. You do need two DCC chips. You don't need any additional chips for the centre uh, trailer cars. They just roll as, as normal, basically. Um, but you will need two DCC chips um, for this set if you're going to run it on the DCC system like I am. Briefly, let's have a look at the roof. Um, which has some nice sort of fan details, but it is all one grey piece of moulded plastic there. Again, if I'm being picky, it would have been nice to see some of these fans either sort of hollowed out a bit more, some more equipment that we can see, maybe some of these areas picked out in black. You do have these additional bits of finish in yellow, and that's obviously been a theme throughout the whole model. You've got um, sort of the uh, warning stripe there on the edge of the door has been picked out in yellow. You've got the warning, uh, warning stripes there on the side of the steps even picked out in yellow. So obviously yellow is the colour of picking stuff out in detail. So mm, if, I, if I'm going to be really picky, and I have to be really picky because it is a fantastic model, don't get me wrong, but it would have been nice to see some of these bits maybe... Um, in black or brown or whatever colours they are in real life. It does look a little bit cheap, if I'm honest, the top, the top of the model. But honestly, it doesn't really detract too much from what is a very nice profile of the S-Stock there. Now, I won't show you the other motor car because it is exactly the same with a slightly different unit number, but here is one of the intermediate cars. And again, you can see all those doors are of uniform length, which is really interesting. I didn't know about that front door being a different size. That's really quite interesting. Um, 
talk a little bit briefly about the coupling system. This is what the end of the cars look like, which again, a couple of people had talked online about, again, this looks a little bit cheap and plasticky, this end bit. And it would have been nice for this part here to have been hollowed out so you can actually see through the unit, um, which obviously you can in real life. You can walk through the, the entire length of the train uh, as, as these sort of in, interconnecting corridor parts are all connected and all lined up. It would have been nice for this bit here to have been removed so that you could actually see through the train. Um, so that's a slight criticism. It's just a little bit plasticky, but... Um, let's not worry about it too much. What I really want to talk about is the coupling mechanism and the sort of these rubberized door um, Well, I don't really know what to call these these sort of the vestibule um, connecting rubberized thingies um, <laughs> that were on the side of the train. So let's just pick up one of the motor units and talk briefly about how these units are going to line up so you can see um, there are some pins that are going to slot into each other there. Hopefully you can see. I'm going to turn that round. There are some pins um, protruding out from the motor car and they're also sort of a slot for the pins um, coming in from the trailer car. Now these aren't electrified and that's again why you have to have um, two separate chips, one in each motor car. Maybe they were intending to have these electrified originally. They're very similar to those Hornby couplings from the class 411, I want to say, no, the 423. They're very similar to those. However, because there's no electrical connections, you don't have to worry so much about being a little bit more firm when you're connecting them and actually it is really easy to couple these up and you can actually do it on the track and I find it's really easy to just sort of push them together and hopefully you can sort of see that mechanism start to work it pushes that coupling mechanism down it sort of releases the pins to come together and then you can just clip them together and that's it they're coupled now, nobody really explains how this coupling system works in any of the other YouTube videos, so I'm hoping that's useful for a few people thinking about getting this model and thinking about the, um, how these trains are coupled up, and hopefully there you can see how they are fitted together. Now, if you want to uncouple them, and this is going to be really hard to do on camera, but this little tool that I showed you earlier on, you slot that underneath there, and you release the mechanism and then you literally just nudge them apart and they do come apart ever so easily. It's actually, I must say, as coupling system to go, it's one of the better ones I've seen on double O scale models, especially ones where you've got a custom coupling system um, designed for the unit itself. Um, one of the worst ones I've ever seen is that the Hornby class 423, which is very similar to this, but it's just, oh so fiddly and it's an electrical connection as well so you're always worried that it's going to break. The normal Backman ones which are those sort of drawbar coupling types which go into the NEM socket they're not brilliant either to be honest they're very fiddly and, and to, to line up the whole unit is especially if you've got a four car unit is incredibly fiddly um, however you can actually load this train up all the units individually on the track and you can quite comfortably do this um, by lining them up on the track. I'm just going to do it once more again for you guys because this is really useful I think nobody else online mentions the coupling um, In any of their review videos. So I'm just going to do that for you again literally line them up that little sort of catch underneath uh, Releases it opens the pins and you can just easily slot them together and it is dead easy And I'll just show you again uncoupling them you take the little tool that Backman have provided this little piece of plastic and to be honest you could use a screw uh, a very fine screwdriver if you wanted to it's going to have exactly the same effect you release the catch and you just have to nudge it and they come apart so easy I must credit Backman 10 out of 10 for design on their their uh, their close coupling system there it really is uh, an inspired design it really is easy to operate and I'd really like to see that coupling system again on some of their other models Incidentally, this is what it looks like on the underside. Um, and again, it's sort of the spring-loaded coupling mechanism that otherwise we are very used to seeing. Um, but as you see, when I do couple them back up, and I'll, I'll show you again when, when we put it on the track, you do get a very close coupling um, setup when you um, put these on the tracks. That is really good, uh, an additional bonus of Batman's design. Now, these wheel sets have pickups 
and I'm not quite sure why they have pickups as it doesn't really they don't seem to go anywhere with the pickups I know you can get lighting sets for these units from train tech again specifically designed for these units but I'm pretty sure that they just slot in the top and they're battery operated but I might be wrong uh, do correct me if I'm wrong maybe the pickups there on the intermediate cars are actually for the lighting okay so here are my three units on the track and before I couple them up for you guys uh, one final time I just want to point out that the motor cars and I want to point out this because nobody really mentions it on their YouTube reviews and it's just useful to know the motor cars they have male connecting pins both of them there that that's one motor car there and that's one motor car there and you'll see that they both have the male connecting coupling pins so that means if you wanted for whatever reason to run this as a two car unit with just motor cars at each end you can't because of that uh, that coupling issue you just have the male connecting pins at one end that by logic means that one of the units in the middle must have female connecting pins at both ends which is correct this this unit 24087 has female connecting pins at that end and it has female connecting pins at the other end and that's why I'm running this unit and not the one that's still in the box which is 22088 which has female connecting pins at one end and male connecting pins at the other end and that just sort of makes sense I mean that that model that that unit there rather would slot in that position there uh, with female that end and male this end so that's just something to worth bearing in mind if you do have a very small layout and you did want to run this as a two car unit you can't do it for that very reason however you can run it as a three car unit you don't have to run it as a four car unit um, as the, as as described on the box and because I've not got much room um, I'm going to run it as a three car unit. I do actually have just enough room to run it as a four car unit, but it looks nicer and it looks neater in its three car form on my layout. So just that coupling mechanism again, and it is really dead easy and I can show you doing it one handed on the track here and hopefully you can see the pins line up and you can just do it one handed and just gently clip them together. And that's all you have to do. And that wasn't very hard and I could do that one handed. How many other multiple units can you couple up one handed? I do ask you that and let's do the same um, the other end. There we go and we're coupled. So easy. It is one of the best parts of this set is the, is the coupling mechanism I will say. Now as a unit doesn't that look fantastic? It really does look awesome. It do, does really look the part and it is very impressive from Backman. One very, very small criticism that I will make is there's a slight height difference between the motor cars and the trailer cars. Can you see that? I don't know if you can. There's a very slight height difference. There we go. Um, in the, uh, the ends of the units. I'm not quite sure why that is. It's something to do with the underframes, I think, on the... Um, motor cars the underframes are metal and that's obviously to do with the uh, adding weight obviously and to do with the slimline motors that are fitted um, here and here however on the trailer cars the underside is plastic so there's obviously some discrepancy um, in the height um, of the trailer cars to the height of the motor cars and therefore you get this sort of ever so slight discrepancy in height there it's a very very minor sort of error there I think and every now and then you sort of think hmm, trailer cars a little bit shallower than the motor cars and I think perhaps if you had the eight car unit you perhaps wouldn't notice notice that I think because I'm running it in as a three car unit where you can just about tell hmm, that car sits a little bit lower than the other ones um, it's a slight slight error from Backman but I'm not going to mark them down too much, especially as that coupling system is really good. Okay, so let's take a look at the model running on DCC mode. So as I said, you need two DCC chips for this unit to work, as there is a motor at both ends, and they are not connected electrically through the train, through the centre units. They are only powering themselves, so you need one at this end and one at that end. Now when you address up your locos, you don't need to do any additional programming, you set them to have the same address, so I've chosen address 19, 
you give address 19 to this unit, um, put it on the programming track individually, then take it off, then put the other unit on program the same address, which happens for me to be 19, and then just the act of this facing that way and then this one facing this way should make everything work. You shouldn't have to do any additional um, CV programming um, to get them to function in tandem. Uh, they should just work off the bat as long as you give them the same program ad address and as long as you've programmed them individually. Don't put them on the track at the same time, otherwise it might confuse the DCC system. So as you would expect, function zero turns on the lights, and as we said earlier, you've got yellow uh, illuminated destination blind, or destination LCD display, I should say, and then you have the white uh, LED headlights, and they are true to life. They are that bright, brilliant white. I like to call this color brilliant white. Um, some people might refer to it as uh, cold white, um, but they are that color in real life. I know Batman are often criticized for their headlights because they always use this color in all of their EMUs or DMUs or even their locos. They use this very bright white lights, this very bright, brilliant, cold white light. Um, and what they should really be using for something like the Class 419, the, the motor luggage van, the Class 411, the Class 416, all those EMUs, they had very sort of dull, warm white lights. If anything, they were very yellow. So they're often criticised for that. But no criticism here, they are true and they are correct to real life. And here are the tail lights in red as you would expect in the right place. Now let's take a little look through the train and it's very hard to see in this kind of summer light, but there is a cab light in there. The problem with this cab light is it tends to bleed through into the rest of the model, into the rest of the unit. Definitely into this front portion of the train and there's another one obviously at the other end and maybe you can see that just there in the sort of middle of the shot it tends to bleed through into the rest of the units now these units aren't lit they only have that cab light again in, in sort of a very brilliant white very cold white light the center unit has no lighting whatsoever and the rest of the unit look, doesn't have any lighting either so that does look quite odd, and I think what they're trying to do is to get you to buy the Train Tech additional lighting kits, which cost an additional £80 to light the whole four-car unit, which is very expensive, I think. So I would have been happy if they omitted the cab lighting. When these trains running round day to day, the cab light isn't on anyway, as that would make it difficult for the driver to see out of the train. So um, maybe there's a way of turning it off. Don't know. You guys tell me if you know a way to turn the cab light off. There might be some funky DCC programming. But otherwise, it's the only very slight criticism um, on the DCC functionality from Backman there. So uh, without further ado, here we go. It's a little bit noisy, but it is very smooth. I mean, look at that. We're on speed step seven, and we're just crawling out of the station there. It is fantastic runner. And then let me bring it back for you. Again, it's a little bit rattly, a little bit noisy, but you really can't fault them on the smoothness of that motor, it really is fantastic. Slow speed performance, well we're down to speed step 3, speed step 2, speed step 1 and it's just moving forward ever so slightly, a little bit jolty but slow speed performance is very good. Um, I'm going to give you a couple more running shots from up here. I'm going to move out my Rubik's Cube camera stand um, and then take it away. Now just take a look at the coupling mechanism working as we go around the corner. 
and it stays close coupled even in the curves. It's very impressive. So that was the Backman S Dock, and I think you'll agree it is a fantastic model and it is a fantastically well designed piece of kit from Backman. Um, let's talk about price. I said I, I promised throughout the, the review I was going to talk about price. Um, so there it is, right at the end, and you probably saw this earlier on. It costs uh, retail £280, it's nearly £300 of model. Um, certainly, when you add DCC chips, that's going to go up to at least 310 isn't it when you add two d two dcc chips 310 for a dcc model that's a lot of money for a four car unit even for a four car unit um why is this so expensive well first of all you're, you're effectively getting two locos um you're getting a motorized car at each end of this unit don't forget and that's why you need two dcc chips for a starter if you were going to buy a loco just on its own maybe a class 47 maybe a class 50 it's going to probably set you back round about a hundred pounds retail anyway i know you can pick up class 47s for very reasonable prices on hattons and, and etc in your local model shop but locos tend to be about 100 to 150 pounds anyway so saying that you've got two of them that's already taking you up to say 200 and 225 pounds then you've got two additional units and let's say coaches cost about 30 pounds that's another 60 so you're already in the ballpark figure of about 270 to 280 pounds straight off the back then you've got to add in all the additional back uh, costs that backman have had to incur with this model and they've had to design uh, special coupling systems which we've looked at They've had to design special motor that we've looked at. They've designed a fresh new box. They've worked with London Transport. I don't know how much of the proceeds go to London Transport Museum. That might also be an additional cost that you're paying a premium for. You're actually contributing to this being a model available in the London Transport Museum. And exclusive models do tend to be quite expensive anyway because one shop has the monopoly on the product. Yes, it's still very expensive in one hit, but I can see where they're going with it and I can see why it's that cost. I still think it's a little bit inflated and I really don't want to push you to say, yeah, it's a really good price, well-priced London Transport Museum, well-priced Backman, because it's a lot of money. But what are you getting? You are getting an exclusive model. It's not available anywhere else. I don't know. That's how I that's how I justified it, and it is very special. I was also able to justify it because I'm a friend of the London Transport Museum. What does that mean? I'm basically a member of the London Transport Museum sort of supporters club, as it were. It's about 25 quid to join a year. This is something I'm going to sell you because this is something I think is good, especially if you like trains and transport in London. You can join for about £25 a year. You get unlimited entry into the museum, which is absolutely brilliant. And you sort of, if you've got a few hours to kill on a lunch break, you can just pop, pop down to the museum, see what exhibitions they've got on. It entitles you to one free entry to the depot in Acton, which is opened two weekends a year and it also gets you 10% off in the shop and it's an unrestricted 10% so you can get 10% off on models so I was able to get 10% off on that so I basically paid 250 252 pounds for this which is it helps justify the cost especially when you're going to add DCC chips to that on top I would recommend um, becoming a friend of the museum just for that for that discount really because you're going you, you know you're going to get entry to the museum which is usually 17 pounds as it is and then you're going to get that all year and you're going to get um an one free entry to the depot open day at Acton, which usually costs 10 or 15 pounds so even if you go to the museum once and to the depot open day you've already saved two quid then anything you buy on top of that you're going to save money on your 10 percent so that's how I justified it. Um, I know for a lot of people, £280 is a massive hit. And I literally, that was model budget for a couple of months done. And that's why I've sort of reached a, a little bit of a lull and there haven't been so many videos because I'm sort of reaching the end of the, the, the tale of basically buying this model. Uh, and then I didn't have so much money to buy on scenery and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's been a dip in the last couple of weeks in, in activity on Woodford Wells, and that's exactly why I'm sort of still paying for this bad boy. Um, but I do hope you enjoyed the video. I do hope you enjoyed um, my my sales pitch um, for both the London Transport Museum Friends Club thing and 
kind of the model. It is a fantastic model. I'm not going to do what I usually do, and I did usually rank things um, with a score, with a final thing. I'm just going to leave it up to you to make your decision on what you think of this model, what you think of the cost, um, and what you think of some of the features that Backmoon have included that we've talked about, talked about the coupling, we've talked about the really good detail, but some of the things that they missed out detail-wise, and there were quite a few things that they missed out detail-wise, um, some of the sort of the roof and the ends, a little bit plasticky, some of the things could have been a little bit better. On the whole though, it is a fantastic model. If you're modelling modern era London, get one, I mean you need one. I, I've adapted the layout just for this model. Um, because I just could not ha not not have one basically. Keep subscribing. Thank you very much for getting involved. I'm going to have a follow up to the question and answer video I had. I'm going to do another question and answer video. I do need to talk about the website with you guys and probably do more of a kind of personal vlog update about that and where I'm going to go with that. Yeah, just keep getting involved. It's been really good and, and there's been a lot of good positive feedback from the Model Railway community on this channel and on other channels and Five Elms is doing a lot of things of shout out videos and all that kind of stuff. And I really do think the Model Railway community on YouTube is, is expanding and it's growing and there's there's a real good community feel and that's something Five Elms said that he felt that the people talking about Model Railways were always friendly and always very approachable and they offered great advice. That's what I'm doing more of these videos for is just advice and and thoughts and comments about what I'm doing and it's it, they're always very well received always very well written by you guys as well I think thank you very much for watching thank you very much for supporting the channel do keep sharing I do hope you've enjoyed this review video who knows if I'm going to do any more um, I will try um, if you've particularly enjoyed this video but yeah come again soon see you later